guys, it's Charlie, I hope you're all well. So today's video is going to be part two of my April book haul. I have, I think, 15 books to show you. Five I bought and the other ten were sent to me for review from various different publishers, um, which I'll speak about when I get to those. Before I get on with the video, I don't want to talk too long because I feel like lately, whenever I film videos, I end up talking for about half an hour before I actually even get on with the video and I don't want to do that today but I did just want to say um, I know it's been a while again since I filmed I'm not going to sit here and reel off excuses to you guys because I don't really have any aside from the fact that I've just been super busy and the only time I have had to film has been at night and I've just been too tired um, I think it's I'm just sort of getting used to my new job and that kind of stuff but really the most important thing that I wanted to say is that um, when May arrives I will be filming much more regularly um, because I will know the proper shifts that I'm going to be doing then um, and so I'll be able to work it around there and I have a ton of videos coming up that aren't book hauls which you'll be excited about because you guys must get fed up of watching book hauls on my channel so yeah that's all i wanted to say i'm going to shut up now and show you the book so i'm going to start off with the five books that i actually purchased myself the first two are manga so i have the third bind up volume of bleach so this has volume seven eight and nine in it you can see there this is without a doubt my favorite manga series of all time now I'm just obsessed with it and I'm obsessed with watching the anime of it as well. If you haven't checked this series out, I cannot recommend it highly enough. It's about a boy called Ishigo who has always been able to see ghosts. But something happens, I'm not going to tell you in case you haven't watched it or, or read it. But something happens and he becomes a soul reaper and he has to fight these creatures called hollows which feed on the souls of the living and the dead. And it's just such a good series. I'm addictive. I'm addictive. I'm addicted. Um, it's got really, really nice artwork in this as well. And I'm currently reading this one. I'm only that far through. I've literally just started it. But I probably will have finished this by tonight. Because obviously manga can go through them nice and quickly. So I got that one. And then I picked up one. This was just literally a random pick up. I'd never heard of it before. But I take, took something back to the bookshop. And I wanted to swap it for something else, so I had a good look around. This just caught my eye, and it is Hatsune Mix by K or Kai. I'm not sure. That's the name there. You can see that. Um, I literally don't know anything about this really at all, um, apart from the fact I think it's originally an anime. I think. Um, and this book has just been made based on it about um, this girl, um, Hatsune Miku, who is a singer and just about the things that she gets up to in her career, I think. it's This is such a beautiful book. And what I really love about it is that some of the artwork in it is, is in colour, which you don't find too much in manga so I'm really excited to read this and it's a nice big one which I always like if you guys can recommend me any manga that is quite thick then please do because I love manga but I hate them when they're like super short and you finish them just super quickly like that I like bigger ones so if you know any do let me know and the next book that I picked up I picked up in the charity shop another one I'd never heard of but it was like two pounds and the cover just caught my attention and that is um, the Salem Witch Society by K.N. Shields. Um, this, it says, Salem, New England, many dark nights ago, the most famous witch hunt in history is about to begin. Years later, a young woman is found savagely murdered, her body arranged in the death pose of a witch. Someone or something is reviving the terror of the notorious Salem witch hunts, and only one man, a brilliant eccentric loner, with a dazzling mind and a fascination with witchcraft, can keep the evils at the of the past at bay. So it's kind of like a crime book, but based around the Salem witch trials. Um, so I'm really looking forward to this one, and for £2 it's in super good condition, so... Yeah, really looking forward to that one. 
And then the last two books that I bought, I picked both of these up in Waterstones because I just couldn't resist. Um, so the first one is... Me Being Me is Exactly as Insane as You Being You by Todd Hassak Lowy. I don't know too much um, about this book. Um, in fact, all I know is that it's a contemporary about a boy called Darren and his life. And the fact that this whole book is set out in lists. I don't know if you can see that. The light's quite bright here. Um, but it is set out, in t it's made up entirely of lists which I think is super cool. I love books that are set out slightly differently. So many books are really similar nowadays. It's nice to find ones that are really different. I, I really like that. Um, and the reason that I had to buy this book is that on the back, I don't know if you can see this, um, but RJ Palacio has put a little review thing for it up here which says, funny, fast-paced and poignant. And RJ Palacio wrote one of my favourite books of all time, which is Wonder. And I just thought, if she says this book is good, then it's got to be. So I'm really excited to read this. And I think even though it's a beast of a book, it's going to be a really quick one. Because it's written in lists. So, yeah. And the last one I bought. And I literally drove for miles to find a Waterstones that had this book in it because I'd been waiting for so long for it and I just, I had to have it. So I literally got in the car with my dad and I asked him to drive me to a Waterstones that's about 45 minutes away from my house and I'm so glad I did because it's beautiful and I can't wait to read it. And that book is What She Left by T.R. Richmond. I'm going to read you the back of this because it's super short. It says... Who is Alice Salmon? Student, journalist, daughter, lover of late nights, hater of deadlines. That girl who drowned last year. Gone doesn't mean forgotten. Everyone's life leaves a trace behind, but it's never the whole story. So this book is obviously about a girl called Alice Salmon who is found drowned. That's not a spoiler, it's in the little um, synopsis bit in the front. And it's... Basically, this professor who is slightly obsessed with her in some way, I think, um, he becomes obsessed with finding out exactly what happened to her. And he feels like the way to do this is to basically look at all the basically digital imprints she's left behind. So her Twitter feeds, her Facebook walls, her emails, her text messages, and he puts them all together in this book. So there is, as I say, diary entries, entries from her Twitter pages, emails, all that kind of stuff. And I just think it's a really interesting concept for a book. And I'm so excited to read this. So the last 10 books that I have to share with you I received for review from various different publishers and I I just feel so lucky. Like I get up in the morning and the postman arrives and brings me all these packages and I still can't quite believe it. I'm just I'm just so lucky and um to any of you that are watching work for any of these publishers, thank you very, very much. I really do appreciate every single one of them and I can't wait to read them all and review them. So the first one that I was sent was from Electric Monkey and they sent me a finished copy of... Oh, hold on, this isn't the finished copy. I've picked up my art copy. Anyway, they sent me um, this finished copy of Messenger of Fear by Michael Grant. This is the arc. I've picked up my wrong, the wrong one off my shelf. Um, and I actually had forgotten all about this book. So I was sent this arc just before Christmas, I think. And I'd forgotten all about it until the finished copy came through and it sort of reminded me to read it because it does sound amazing. It's all to do with fear and trying to overcome it, I think. And I know a lot of people love this book, so now I have two copies. I'm definitely going to get around to reading it um, very, very soon. Apologies that I haven't actually picked up the finished one to show you. But as I say, this is it here. I don't know how you're going to be able to see it. But it is a super cool cover. Maybe I'll put in a little shot of it at the end. I don't know. We'll see. Harper Collins sent me a copy of Unraveling by Elizabeth Norris. 
Um, this book actually came out all the way back in 2012. Yeah, 2012. And I don't know too much about it, apart from the fact that it's about a girl called Janelle who is hit head on by a pickup truck and she's killed, but then someone heals her in the middle of the road and she doesn't understand why and then she realises that she has 23 days to stop the world from ending, basically. What's really exciting about this is that it says... Um, that it is kind of like the X-Files and you guys know how much I love the X-Files so I'm super excited to read this one. It's kind of a big book. Um, not sure when I'll get round to it but hopefully it will be quite soon. Quirk Books sent me a copy of The Fan Goals Guide to the Galaxy by Sam Mags and this is kind of more of a coffee table kind of book. Um, it's just full of all things to do with fangirls, fangirl all communities that you can follow online and it's all about like comic cons and just all things geek really. Um, oh here we are, look, fanfic, cosplay, cons, books, memes, podcasts, vlogs, OTPs, RPGs, MMOs and more. Um, and it's got interviews with lots of authors, female authors, um, and yeah, it looks like a really interesting book that you can just sort of dip in and out of. And uh, yeah, this one comes out, when does this one come out? It comes out on May 12th, so not too long at all for you to wait for this one. The next three books were all sent to me by Walker. The first one is Nobody Saw No One by Steve Tassan. Um... This one is supposed to be like a modern day Oliver um, and it's about a boy who fle flees a children's home um, but something is coming after him or something like that. I, I don't really know too much about it but it, it sounds really good. And I love, absolutely love the cover. I think it's a really nice cover. Um, yes, that's that one. They also sent me The Rest of Us Just to Live Here by Patrick Ness. I literally know nothing about this book. I'm not very good today. I don't know much about a lot of these. Um, it's about a boy called Mikey. But to be honest, even the synopsis doesn't really make that much sense. But sometimes it's good to go into a book knowing as little about it as possible. Um, I've never read a Patrick Ness before, so this will be my first one. I know a lot of people love him, so I'm sure I will end up doing so too. Um, and this one comes out on the 27th of August, so a little while to go for this one yet. And the last one that I received from Walker, and this is probably the one that I'm most excited about, and it is Remix by Non Pratt. I read Non Pratt's debut novel, Trouble, um, last year, I think it was. And it ended up being one of my favourite books of the year. I absolutely adored it. And I'm so excited to have a copy of something else of hers in my hands. Um, it's about two friends, Kaz and Ruby. And their time at a music festival, I think. And the things they get up to. And if it's half as good as um, Trouble, then it's going to be absolutely amazing. Can I just show you this awesome press release? It's so cool and colourful and it makes me excited for the summer and I just showed you it for about half an hour then upside down never mind we'll just we'll ignore that the next book was sent to me by Canongate and it is Reasons to Stay Alive by Matt Haig I hope you can see this one it's very white and the light is very bright um, I'm really excited for this one this is a non-fiction book and it is about the author Matt Haig's journey with depression and I I kind of tend to stick away from books that are about depression and anxiety and stuff just because I always worry that I'm going to end up feeling more depressed than I did before going into the book because obviously I suffer with it. Um, but I've heard that this one is really uplifting and I really love Matt Haig. He's such a nice guy. And um, yeah, I'm re I just want to read you this little tiny segment from inside the book here because I thought it was just beautiful. And it says, I wrote this book because the oldest cliches remain the truest. Time heals. 
the bottom of the valley never provides the clearest view. The tunnel does have a light at the end of it, even if we haven't been able to see it. Words just sometimes really can set you free. So I'm really excited to read this one. And yeah, I think it just seems like it's going to be a really beautiful book. Millen sent to me Forgotten Girl by Naomi Jacobs. This is a non-fiction book. Um, about Naomi who one night at the age of 32 she went to bed and she woke up the next day and she thought that at believing she was a 15 year old schoolgirl, and she's suffering with a condition called dissociative amnesia um, and I just think this is going to be a really interesting read um, me and my friend Imogen were talking about this yesterday she actually told me about it um, and then this morning I woke up and this package arrived and it had this in it and I couldn't believe it um, but I'm really really excited to read this one I think it's going to be a super interesting emotional sort of read so yeah really looking forward to that one the next book was sent to me from Penguin and that is The Sudden Departure of the Frasers by Louise Candlish just show you a little close-up oh there we go of that one um, this is one of if not my most anticipated read of the year I have been, I heard about this last year and I have been desperate to get my hands on a copy and I'm so happy that it is a beast because I really want to just delve right into this. So this is set in a place called Lime Park Road and the main characters are a couple called Joe and Christy Davenport and they move into a house in this road and not long after they get there Christy becomes obsessed with finding out about the last people that um, lived there, or the last person that lived there, who was called Amber Fraser. And she basically disappeared overnight. And none of the neighbours like talking about it. And Chrissy basically decides to find out what is going on in this street and why this woman just disappeared overnight. I am, oh my god, I, I can't wait to read this. This is definitely going to be one of my next reads because, oh... I'm so, this is, this is a book that I just want to spend all day in the park with and just, that sounds like I want to like put it on a swing and like push it backwards and forwards and like play with it down a slide or something, obviously I mean read it, um, <laughs> but yeah I just, oh I'm so excited for this book, I'm going to have to put it down now because I'm fangirling. And then the last book that I received was sent to me from Hatchet and it is The Dead House by... Dawn Kurtigish. Um, apologies if I've completely butchered that name. I'm so excited to have a copy of this in my hands. Dawn is one of my favourite booktubers and I'll put the link to her channel down below so if you haven't checked her out you can. Um, and this is her debut novel. I've sort of been watching this come to fruition. I'm friends with her on Facebook and I've sort of been watching her journey to like from the start of this book to all the way to now when it's a finished product and I'm so excited to have a copy of this in my hands and be able to see um, all of her hard work. I have no doubt it's going to be amazing. It sounds fantastic. It came like the art came in such a cool way so I'll just show you close up. Um, so on the front here it has this little post-it note that says I curse anyone who reads this book and then underneath it is just like this little heart with a little sort of diary journal thing on it and then inside it came with this little um, psychiatric hospital admissions form and then on it there's another post-it note which says when no one will believe you you become the liar they think you are so it came just packaged so well and I love arcs that come like this it just I think it makes it just all the more um exciting so I'll read you the back because it's super short it says 25 years ago Elmbridge High School burned down three students were killed in the blaze 20 were injured and one Carly Johnson disappeared for two decades little was uncovered about what became known as the Johnson incident until now and then it says it's a compelling and unforgettable psychological thriller that will have you hooked from the very first page. So I'm super excited about this. This comes out on the 6th of August, so a little while till I can talk about this one yet. That's it. That is my huge um, April book haul, part two. 
and um, I will hopefully see you again in a few days time because I have got another video that I need to get um, uploaded but as I said just bear with me until May and then I will be back full time making videos for you guys um, yeah so I am going to go now I hope you're all well and I will see you all in my next video